<laughs> I'm Easy Rider and welcome to Tokuween Monster Movie. Oh, forget it. <laughs> gun more badly in my life right now. Toku Faithful, what you're about to see may cause blindness and death. And maybe not in that order. You are about to witness a horrifying movie, and not in a good way. The Giver. Released in 1991, this film was a live-action adaptation of the popular manga Bio Booster Armor Giver. The story was about a high school student who came across a prototype unit called the Giver Unit. He becomes the Giver to protect his friends and battle the evil Kronos Corporation and the Zoonoids who control it. This movie had all the makings of something great, and even had an old friend of ours, Steve Wang, who did the creature effects and co-directed the film. That's good! But thanks to corporate meddling, he had little control over this film. That's bad. It's about to get worse, Toku Faithful, so let's look at those drive-in totals. We have 11 dead bodies, 2 furry breasts, arm breaking, leg breaking, gang tossing, arm ripping, head ripping, saw blade to the head, knee to the groin, head butting, eye poking, ear rolls, exploding zoonoid, imploding zoonoids, multiple fist fights, kung fu, microscope fu, Check it out and... Oh god, I wish I wasn't here. We see a scientist on the run with some glowing alien MacGuffin who ditches it before he's caught by some no good nicks, and Pluto from the hills have eyes. He then turns into the eyebag creature from horror at Party Beach, but he's not the only one who can change. And so, our runaway scientist gets his head smashed in for his troubles. What a waste of a good brain. You know, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And my mind is a terrible waste. Waka waka! <laughs> we got a lot of movie to get through here, people! Cut me some slack! We then cut to underdog Sean here, getting beaten and bullied. I'm rooting for him already. Seems our boy is distracted, though, by the cutie Mizuki. Or Miski. Yeah, I'm not calling her that. Aikido technique, and it means entering throw. Hey! Focus! If Kenji Oba was teaching this class, you'd be dead by now. Uh-oh. Fanboy interest is dropping fast. We're losing him. Prep the real star of the movie. Stat! Just use your key power. Key means the central energy of people and of the universe. Yep, the Jedi Master himself, Mark Hamill, has to carry this craptastic film. I'm looking for Miski Sagawa. That's me. So he explains what happened with that golden throat of his. What a sad moment, and oh yeah, there's a keto lessons going on here too. Kinda puts a damper on this emotional scene, don't you think? I'm Max Reed, CIA. Been investigating the Kronos Corporation where your father worked. I've got some bad news for you. What? Your father and I had a meeting tonight. He was delivering something he'd gotten out of Kronos Lab. He said it was important and dangerous. He never made it. They got to him first. I couldn't quite make out what was going on. Sean! How about stepping forward and showing the class your version of the move I just demonstrated? Me! Man, Ryotaro from Kamen Rider Denno would call this guy a punk-ass bitch. 
Sean! Okay, movie, we get it. He sucks. Bastards. If only I was an armored warrior with alien technology, I'd show him. I'd show him all. Meanwhile, at Evil Co., I mean Kronos Corporation, a blatantly evil businessman named Balkus is greeted by a blatantly evil henchman named Lisker. You have it. Good. Because... I wouldn't want a hair on your lovely head hurt. Uh, could this be construed as sexual harassment in the workplace? I'd talk to an HR rep. I wouldn't want a hair on your lovely head hurt. No, we're talking about sexual harassment here, and I don't have to take it. Sexual harassment violates you, and it violates the law. What is this? Some sort of masochistic joke? Why do I get the feeling that's exactly what the creator of Guyver said after watching this movie? So Valkus, with his third eye, plays a game of Stop Hitting Yourself with Lisker, who promises to get it back. Ah, just in time, because Valkus was about to have an evil dinner with Mr. Burns and Carl Zichter. He's the only one in existence. You must find it! Find it! I don't care if it's a Tamashi Web exclusive! You must find it! Sean follows Max and Mizuki to the scene of the crime, and his superiors take this opportunity to nag him. So you still chasing Ninja Turtles, huh? No, you're confusing this with a good comic book movie. Besides, we all know who Mark is really chasing. No! My eye! Sucker! Ah, crap, he found it. What's this? Tony Stark's arc reactor. Oh, he'll pay a fortune to get this back. So, since we can't focus on the quote-unquote hero of this movie, back to Agent Hamill and the scientist's daughter. Basically, Dr. Sagawa, Mitsuki's father, agreed to bring the Giver unit to him because, duh, evil corporation won't do bad thing with it. God. Are you all right? Yes. Sean, I'm sorry I forgot about the ride. Holy crap, is that Mark Hamill? I want his autograph. So the gang from before looks for the unit, including Jimmy J.J. Walker from Good Times. I'm sure that excites all two of you who were alive when that show first aired. They also bust into a rap for no other reason than it was popular at the time. Sean's ride breaks down and another gang decides to beat the crap out of him. So instead of running, even when they know they're screwed, they fight him anyway to make the Giver look strong. He almost decapitates one of them, then he sees what he really is. Get 
It's itching. It's itching. I have to scratch my nose! So Lisker goes back to Balkus to tell them they failed, again, and he makes an evil speech. He then tells him to go get the scientist's daughter. Admittedly, this following line is funny. Bring her to me! And anyone else connected? Perhaps she knows something. It's obvious you don't. Go! Get her! Yes, sir! It's so hard to find good henchmen these days. The next day, Max's fellow agents believe there's nothing sinister happening at Kronos. I'll tell you one thing that I know for sure. Kronos was not involved. One thing. I mean, what the hell is a scientist doing in the middle of the night walking down a concrete riverbed in his lab coat, fishing? Unless it's this doctor, that's a very good question. So, because you can't trick the trickster, Max refuses to let this case go, so Colonel Castle, yes, that's his name, decides to have his partner followed. Meanwhile, in romantic subplot theater, Sean tries to woo Vivian. Get it? Cause her actress's name is Vivian Wu? Eh? Huh? Eh? Huh? Yeah, I'll just go to hell for that joke. Oh wait, I'm already here, watching this movie! She confides in him that her father was killed. So our hero, and I use that term loosely, finds out that the father of the woman he loves was killed. And instead of staying there to protect her in case they come back for her, yeah, that's what I thought. Is your head up your ass for the warmth? So in the continuing adventures of Max Reed and some karate student alien bug thing, both of them find Mizuki being kidnapped. What the hell's going on? They got Mizuki! The screws, use your lightsaber! What, and break it? You know, George Lucas makes me pay for these. So they run, and the Kronos gang gives chase. JJ goes into his zoonoid form, and then this happens. <laughs> Linnea Quigley. While she's doing that, I'd like to point out that Linnea Quigley is a legendary scream queen, and you should check out her work if you have not already. Did you know Linnea Quigley was on an episode of Monster Vision with Joe Bob Briggs? Pretty cool, huh? Hey, yo! Shot! Yo! Where the hell am I? Hey! That is not your cue! You stepped on my scream! So after that gratuitous cameo, Misaki tells Sean that they want the Giver. Why are they chasing us? They want a Giver. The what? Yes, I'm obligated to make that joke, so cross MacGyver off your bingo card if you're still watching this crap. So the whole gang is now in full Zoonoid effect and they split up to look for them. Isn't that what the good guys are supposed to do in a movie like this? Well, it works, and our young couple get away while Max empties his clip into JJ. Surprisingly, it worked. Go figure. Don't fuck with the Jedi Master, son. Get going! But his moment of glory is short-lived, and they soon surround the two. Sean decides to finally man up. <laughs> you mind sucker! Oh, come on, guys. This is a good enough movie. You shouldn't have to rip off Home Alone. Let her go! <laughs> okay, admittedly, that was pretty funny. Sean tries to transform, but there's no henshin device until he sees Misaki getting hurt, and that flips on his badass switch. He then gets his moment of awesomeness. I am the Giver. Holy crap, that was awesome! 
And they did all that without CGI. So instead of taking these bitches apart piece by piece like he should, we have to sit through one of the dumbest moments in toku, nay, film history. I apologize in advance. Let her go! <laughs> Yo, I deal with this. I've been looking high, I've been looking low for the guiding, jiving thing to show. And now this punk... Come off, damn you, come off! Well, let me just tell you one thing. I'm gonna boot that thing with the guiding thing. Can we please go back to Linnea Quigley screaming? Oh, that is heavenly. The Giver throws JJ across the room and the audience cheers. He then breaks one of the Zoonoids necks. Oh, brutal. He then has a surprisingly awesome fight with another Zoonoid while Lisker uses Misaki as a shield. All seems well until Lisker gets involved and Sean busts his third eye on the top of his armor. He's able to kill the Zoonoid holding Misaki, but she gets hurt in the process. Guess now he's third eye blind. Get it? Eyes, do you see? Ah! I think I'm losing it. Well, the kid with alien armor is dead. Guess the movie's over. Just kidding. So they take the agent and the girl, and we cut to... Oh, I don't like where this movie is going. Balkus tells Mitsuki that he knew her father and probes her for information. Not literally, though, thank God. The important thing is, your friend found a most valuable item. I must find out how he managed to activate it. What? The Giver unit. Come with me. Raising? So he goes on another long-winded evil speech about the Zoonoids, the Giver, his evil plans, the works. Take a look around. This could be your new home. Let me go! I don't know anything! Oh, Steve, buddy, we have got to talk. I love your work, man, don't get me wrong, but you have got to look for better actresses from now on. I'm getting Maya from Kamen Rider Dragon Knight flashbacks here. So we're introduced to the other big star of the movie, Dr. Jeffrey Combs. Hold it! It's funny because Jeffrey Combs played a character in Reanimator called Dr. West, also starring David Gale, who plays Balkus. Here he's playing a character called Dr. East. You get it? He reports his findings on that control gizmo and says it's growing into another Giver unit. Well, that's convenient. So I guess because he's a sadistic bastard, Valkus shows that he's turning Max into a Zoonoid. So now Mitsuki decides to play ball. It was... It was like... Like this. Hey! She grabs the control medal, and she really didn't think this through. She threatens to destroy it, and when Dumbass here goes to grab it, he knocks it into a Zoonoid's mouth. You gotta see what happens next. I... I can't even. Get it out! Get it out! Oh, it's growing! It's growing! Chestburster alien, you rascal. Just kidding, it's the Giver. I'm back, bitches! I killed you once, and I'll kill you again! You can't kill me. I've been rejected by death. 
They save Max and try to run while Sean deals with the other Zoonoids. Lisker has a rematch with Guyver, and this just turned into a Scooby-Doo chase. Tell me, tell me where you been hiding. I took a look and I decided. I gotta know why you missed the me. I can't take nothing but you. All I do. about that movie? You feel good about that scene? Nice work. I'm just doing my job. That's what I thought. Guyver finishes off Lisker by tearing his head open. Fatality. Well, it seems like they're in the clear until Max begins to turn into... whatever the hell this thing is. It's too late for you, but you've got to stop them! Oh. Don't let them get away with it. Max! <laughs> Mark Hamill has been struck down by this movie, Toku Faithful and he shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Well then. <laughs> I guess you lose. No, you're the one who loses. I intend to stop your insane experiments on innocent people. Well then, do it! <laughs> Come and get me! <laughs> oh my god, this movie should have a laugh track. Come and get me! <laughs> <laughs> but like it's ever that easy, Balkus becomes the lost final boss from a Doom game? How is he gonna bring down that monstrosity, you ask? By flashing it. How else? Nothing you can say Nothing's gonna change what you got He saw the light and it blew him to bits. So Sean reconciles with Mitsuki, I guess his clothes didn't regenerate with him. And they live happily ever- OH COME ON! Haven't I suffered enough? I got a job for you. So this whole movie was just build up to a good times reference? All of it was just for an obscure 70s reference? No, oh, what's the use? Screaming and raging about it won't fix this movie, so I'm not even gonna give it the satisfaction. Well, that's the end of the Giver, but not the last we'd see of him in movie form, as he'd return for Giver Dark Hero, which is leaps and bounds better than this. And that was the Giver. Well, time for pros and cons. The costumes look fantastic. This was still before CGI took over, and they had to rely on good old-fashioned rubber suits. You could tell that a lot of effort was put into them to keep them as close to the source material as possible. Today's filmmakers could learn a lesson from these guys. This is how it's done. There are just some gratingly awful moments in this movie. Not just the Jaws scene or the monster rap. The chases, the scenes with Balkus, and don't get me started on JJ, aka MC Striker. It's obvious that someone wanted to make this a straight up three part action movie, and someone wanted to appeal to the kiddies. So they forced in a ton of bad dialogue, bumbling villains, and pop culture references. That and they repeat a ton of lines constantly. Let her go! Let her go! Let her go! Just doing my job. Yo, man! I'm just doing my job! See? Annoying, isn't it? Steve Wang and Brian Usner were playing tug-of-war with this movie, and the only loser was the audience. The story. They stuck closer to the original than you think. Of course, they had to change the main character to an American, and they had to shoehorn in a character for the real star of the movie because he was too old to play the main character. But they got a lot of other things right. Kronos, the look of the Zoonoids and the Giver, Mizuki and Tetsu Sagawa. 
I'm amazed at how close they stuck to it. Steve Wang is a fanboy just like us, and he knew what he was doing. Today a lot of directors take way too many creative liberties with their product until it bears hardly any resemblance to the source material. I applaud Steve for sticking to his guns. I'm pretty sure the execs wanted to change everything, so at least all that survived. This movie was butchered when it came to DVD. Not only did they have to re-rate it, but they had to cut out all the violence to get it on DVD. This misleading director's cut ruins the movie by adding cheesy cutaway effects and adding a scene or two. If you can find the original uncut version of this movie, treasure it. I mean, look, the DVD flat out lies to you by making Hamill out to be the hero of the movie. Yeah, I'm sure that wasn't done to make a quick buck. The acting is hit and miss in this film. Several lines are laughably bad. Admittedly, you can tell Mark Hamill was at least trying in this movie. And to be fair, he pulls off the hardball detective act pretty good. On the other hand, David Gale, who played Balkus, amped up the overacting to 11. He was a villain that you love to hate, but at the same time, it feels like he just stepped out of an 80s cartoon. And don't get me started on Mizuki. Bottom line, there were some times you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Final analysis? I give it a D. It's not god-awful, it's just... bad. <laughs> there was potential here. So much potential for a franchise undone by executive meddling and bad acting. It makes me sad to think this movie could have opened the doors for anime and toku in the United States. But it was shot down by producers who focused too much on being trendy instead of making a good movie. For what it's worth, Screaming Mad George and Steve Wang did their best. Admittedly, this movie is so bad it's good, and it's not as unbearable as I make it out to be. I don't hate Brian Yuzna. He's worked on some movies I like, but he should have let it be and allowed the director a lot more creative control, which in an interview Wang stated he did not have. If you like this movie or cheesy movies like it, that's fine, laugh it up. Nothing wrong with that. But I just sigh and imagine what could have been. What happened to lights? Why is the TV still on? <sighs> Better find a flashlight. Oh, what a coincidence, just happened to find one. Well, with all this, I still can't see. You see what we make you see. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!